good, come on, good, 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 biblical morning, oh yeah, oh yeah, good morning, my name is Daniel, I love Jesus, I love the Bible, and I love sharing it with people, I'm here with my wife, Ashley, she loves coffee, and uh, she has some this morning, so grab a cup of coffee. And uh, join along with us for Bible, read along, Bible, read along, Bible, read along, go ahead, invite a friend. All right, so today we are looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. See, I'm looking at it right now, looking at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Um, grab a Bible, grab a pen, grab a highlighter, get ready to jump into the Word of God with us. We 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 weed, we weed from, I sound like you wascally wabbit, um, we read from the NIV version, which is the exact same as the Celebrate Recovery Bible. Ashley and I are both Celebrate Recovery leaders, and so... That's what we do. We, we tie in a lot of recovery principles. If you're not in recovery, uh, I'm learning and studying right now. I mean, recovery simply means to mature. So we are, we are doing that. And if you want to keep growing and maturing in your Christian faith, this is a great place to be. I think that's it for kind of our opening. Say hello in the comments. We always love to hear from you. Um, we love to hear where you are watching from, love to say good morning, so please hit up the comments even right now, even if it's just a quick hello, uh, we would love to hear from you. So jump in there, we will be connecting with you. If you are looking for a Celebrate Recovery, we do have an online service, we posted it last night to Bible Read Along as well. Uh, amazing testimony last night from Jeff Stoltz the international director of Broken Chains, the Christian Motorcycle Club. And uh, if you haven't heard that one yet, I encourage you today, go listen to it. Take take the time to get in there and just listen and, and see what God will do in your own heart. All right. I think I'm ready. Hit that share button. We got a few people on this morning. So morning, Milton, morning, Matthew, Mike. Of course, Ashley's in the chat as well. So good to see you guys. And I get to see Ashley in person. So that's even better, even better. She's tired today. Yeah. And quiet. <laughs> All good. All right. Well, let's do it. Let's pray. Let's go to the Word of God and uh, see what God has for us today. Again, if you haven't, please hit the share button. Uh, let's just get the Word out and uh, invite people. You never know who's going to come. Sometimes it's people you don't expect, family members, friends um, that you don't expect. Sometimes people that have added you or you've added on Facebook don't expect it. Um, but they come and they only more people are likely to come because of an invite. And so please take a minute, share or invite this out. And uh, let's see. Let's see who God brings. So uh, morning, Carolyn. We're glad you're here as well. Let's pray and let's go to the word of God today. So, Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you, God, that you bring life, even when it seems like maybe life around us is just filled with despair or darkness. You bring life. You bring hope. And so today, Lord, we fix our eyes on you. We turn to you and just say, fill us up. Would we lead and live Bible-based, Christ-centered, spirit-filled lives in the name of Jesus? Amen. Amen. Um, for those that are joining, we have people literally joining us from all over the world. Uh, Google has locked me out of this map. They they kind of delete them after a while. So I, I have to find a way to re-update a whole new map again of where people are joining us from or a way maybe that scrolls with all of the names. Um, but we're going to get that figured out. But we still would love to hear from you. And... 
before we go to how long is this this is a shorter one we're going to do it today before we do let's go watch home of hope this is an amazing organization i have traveled with it's an organization i give to um lots of great stuff that they do and going on so here we go just a couple minute promo from home of hope and then we are going to get into first corinthians chapter three $50 a month can completely change a child's life in every way. Your donations and sponsorships are being used to entirely transform lives. Be a part of something bigger. Donate or sponsor a child today. So there is Home of Hope, great organization that I love. Go and check them out. When you go to their site, you can go up and find their projects. There is all sorts of stuff at all sorts of levels to be involved in. It doesn't have to be a monthly commitment. It can be a one-time gift. Things like the animal project, um, taking families and animals so that they get, uh, they get income from that. Dream Center project where they rescue babies from the dump. Feeding program. Some of these kids literally walk hours, two to three hours for one meal a week. Um, and it's the best meal they get, and it's literally rice, beans, and a little bit of flavor. Um, so that's a dollar a plate that you can feed kids. So one feeding program, I've been there, been in these feeding programs. Sometimes you have 100 kids show up. Maybe you want to go, you know what? I want to take care of the feeding program for one day, and I'll just pay 100, and let's feed all those kids. Lots of stuff. The Shoe Project, many kids around the world, Congo, Rwanda, um, Kenya, don't have shoes. India, and so we get them sh their first pair of shoes to help keep their feet protected. Medical cards, $6, and that's it for the year. One, one cup of coffee gets kids now access to medical supplies and doctors. Microloan Project, Pregnant Mothers Project, School Projects, Stella Project, Tsunami Project, so many go check them out homeofhope.ca all right let's go to the word of god if you're ready you know what to do hit your bible i mean hit your thumbs up for the bible it's time oh you guys are already all over it you're beating me today i have a feeling that's my wife because the facebook people are a few seconds behind but thank you hun for all of your support here we go. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. NIV version, the church and its leaders. So what do we know about Corinthians so far? This is Paul writing to the church in Corinth. There's been some issues, struggles there, and he is writing to kind of set them straight on what has been going on and how Christians should be living. The church and its leaders. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, More, mere infants in Christ. So he's just coming out of the, I mean, we're already in the middle of the letter. He's done some welcomes and some, but he's just dropping the bomb now. Now, interesting here that we see brothers and sisters. You're part of the family. God's brought you in. We love you. Your brothers and excuse me, brothers and sisters, but you're still worldly. 
In fact, you're kind of like children. This is also a hopeful thing to me because this shows me our Christian faith is like a child growing into an adult. It's a progress. It's a process. It doesn't just happen overnight. We have to walk this thing out. We have to learn. We're going to make mistakes. We got to get it right. And this is a hopeful thing to me as well, hearing him. But let's keep reading what Paul says to the church in Corinth here. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is, what does it mean to be worldly? Here we go. Jealousy, quarreling among you. And you are, oh, sorry. Are you not worldly? For if there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? In other words, these are childish human arguments. Same as, let's relate this to today. Well, I think our church is the best because we do this. I don't like these churches that do that. And I, this church is a little weird to me. This is the same argument as I follow Paul, I follow Apollos, I follow, and it's childish. It's not spirit driven. Um, I don't like that TV preacher. You've never even met that TV preacher. Stop talking. Maybe you didn't like his style. Maybe it's not for you, but do not judge his entire ministry based on one show that you watched and you now think or one meme you've seen or I'm going off. But that's that's my thoughts on this. If this was modern day, this is how Paul would talk to us. I'm still giving you milk because you're still acting like children. What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned each his task. I planted that the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants, yeah, make sure I'm on the right spot here. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose. For they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's built building. Um, I love this because, again, Paul, I, I see often in Paul's writings, he's talking about doing your own, you're responsible for your own gifts. You're responsible for what God has given you. We're not to compare. We're not to compete. We are to just do what God has called us to do and God will bring the fruit of that. So what has God called you to do? There's different gifts, some plants, some water, but God reaps the harvest. And I love where he talked about here. I took that completely differently than you did. How did you take it? I took it as the plants and the, and the water is, is part of the church. So like, um, you get what you need a little bit from your pastor and from the church you're planted in and people at church. So you get your little bits, but only God can give you everything and you have to go out and find it. That's a great point. So, um, those, I know Ashley's not by the mic here, but what, no, all good. What, uh, what she had just said was, you know, this is, she saw this as church, that we go to church and we get a little bit of water, we get a little bit of growth, but really it's up to us to now still connect with God. If, am I saying that correctly still? Um, you know, and so our church and our pastors give us a little bit, but we need to grow in God. I fully agree with that too. And I think that's a great interpretation and, and look at this. How do you see this? You know, some are Apollo, some are Paul. It's a little, it does a little good. It's a little bit of water, a little bit of growth, but God brings the increase. I fully agree with that as well. I think we need to personally connect with God and see this. Um, and that's probably where he, he talks about here. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field. He's watering you. He's seeing things grow in you. You are God's building. He's slowly putting you together brick by brick. It takes time. And I love that Carolyn just highlighted that part as well. We are God's co-workers in God's service. Give us wisdom and silliness, she said, but I don't think that's the word she was meaning to put in there. But 
willingness there we go um give us wisdom and willingness to to serve where we live I like silliness better. amen and sometimes we need a little silliness in there too absolutely um and carolyn i do see your prayer request there we'll pray for you at the end as well by the grace of god verse 10 by the grace god has given me i laid a foundation as a wise builder and now someone else is building on it but each one should build with care for no one can lay any foundation other than what is already laid which is jesus christ interesting that it doesn't just say jesus laid a foundation jesus is the foundation the other than the one already laid which is jesus christ what is the foundation of your life um you know i read an article uh, a meme today i saw a meme when i woke up about you know if you if you left the church because you if you stopped believing in god because the church hurt you your belief was in the church not in god now does that pain happen yes church hurt happens people happen we got to work through that. We got to build through that. But what is your foundation? Is your foundation, wow, I go to church? Is your foundation, wow, this church is, is really good and whatever it might be. This church really teaches the word and this church really values community and this church really values outreach. And, you know, it. that's not the foundation. The foundation has to be Christ. And then we build on top of that. And so we always have to realign. Is your foundation finances? Oh, I thank God. God's my foundation until your finances get shaken. And then you suddenly go, oh man, we're about to lose our business. We've lost, we almost lost our home. Maybe we did. We've, we've lost work. We've lost contracts. And suddenly you start to realize maybe my foundation wasn't as much God as it was my finances. Maybe it's relationships and then you get rejected, you get hurt, people walk away. Maybe it's it's um, your own wisdom, your own strength. Maybe it's your own ability. You know, what is your foundation? Are you building on Jesus Christ? For one, no one can lay any foundation other than what is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Verse 12. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stone, wood, or hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved even though only as one escaping through the flames. Now, very interesting thing here. I actually, I was a big Survivor fan when Survivor first came out. Uh, watched every season. We had a group in Kelowna that we actually, our Bible study met for an hour before, and then we watched Survivor. That was what we did. And uh, this to me, it's almost funny because this seems almost like a Survivor game. We're going to build, we're going to build the biggest, strongest tower, and then we're going to light it on fire and whatever's left, that person wins. And, you know, there's this, this kind of weird analogy here that Paul's using. You know, we keep building and some might be gold, some might be hay, some might be mud, some might be silver, some might be, and really this is, this though is how, how much is this like our lives? You know, we build things and build and we're working on things or or growing in books. And then all of a sudden we realize, you know what? That really didn't have a lot of benefit to me. Or wow, this one really was pure gold. This brought life to me. It's changed my life forever. Um, we are continually building. And there will be a test. Not only will the building stand, but can it survive fire? Can it survive trial? Can it survive again? What is your foundation? And what are you building? Um, if what has been built survives, the builder receives a reward. Yay. If it's burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but he will still be saved. This is not talking about our salvation. This is talking about adding things to our lives and the lives of others. Is it building and growing or not? Don't you know? that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred 
and you together are that temple. Now, some of you will go, see, this. we don't even need churches. We are the temple. We just need to gather together. I actually see in scripture, not just this one verse, but on a bigger picture, the context of it, that we need both. We are the church and we go to church, the building. We are called to build each other up and connect and grow and meet, but we are also called their system structures in place as Paul talks about leaders and systems and deacons and church and Apollos and Paul and there's systems and structures in place and we actually need both. I'm not going to talk too much about that because I have gone off on that many, many times. You can follow other Bible read along chapters to get that message. Do not deceive yourselves. In recovery, what is self-deception? We would call it denial. Um, don't be in denial. If any of you think you are wise by the standard of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise are futile. So then no more boasting about human leaders. All things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, which is another name for Peter. Um, it, that's weird. The pop-ups on mine. It's funny. I can click on it but the pop-up doesn't actually show on the screen. Weird. Um, or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all are yours. And you are in Christ and Christ is of God. So what is this last little bit here saying? He's saying, you think you're building and you think you're so smart and you think you know what you're doing. You don't. It's all foolishness. Just know Jesus. Build on the foundation and everything else is just to add to it. It's not to be the thing that we seek. Well, I go to this church. Well, I go to, I follow this. Well, I read the whole Bible. Well, I read the New Testament. Well, I read Paul. Well, I read just the words of Jesus. And I read, you know, that's not the point. The point is build on Jesus and keep growing. That's what I get out of this. What do you get out of this? Um... Let me know. Let, let's know in the comments right now. What are you getting out of 1 Corinthians chapter 3? Let's go to some comments here. I know Carolyn has a prayer request, so we'll go to that. Um, and then uh, let's read read some comments. So you got a second, put a comment in, even if it's just a quick, this stood out to me, that stood out to me. Carolyn says... Please pray for me as I've been invited to take nine-week course called Concerned Persons Group under the umbrella of Adult Teen Challenge. Oh, cool. Please pray for my son, Dave, who is in Refreshers course at Adult Teen Challenge in Lake Country. And also pray for my stepson, Wes, who is in a shelter in Surrey and still trapped in addiction. My heart is heavy. Well, Lord, we just thank you so much for Carolyn. Thank you for even putting these things on her heart. And Lord, we just pray right now for strength to her heart. God, we pray for Dave. We pray for Wes that they walk with you, leaving behind worldly things and see you move in their lives. We pray blessing over these courses with Tea and Challenge. Pray blessing over these shelters. And God, that your spirit be made known, that people have a life-changing encounter with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Completely side note here, but I have been to Lake Country Teen Challenge many, many, many times. I used to preach there. Um, almost once a month I was preaching there and many made many great friends through the Teen Challenge out in Lake Country, Okanagan. Um, so great program, great guys, and just excited um, that Dave's reconnecting with them again. Okay, what are people getting I got to get, okay, let's go to, sorry, I'm all over here. Matthew's got a great comment. Sorry, I'm, my computer's freezing up here. But he says, Matthew says, 
I think all of us need to grow in God the Father lots because God is strong and mighty and loves us all very much. That's so good, Matthew. Mike has said, we are all broken people being used. Spread love and life to the broken. Yes. And when we realize sometimes, again, that childish jealousy, pride, boasting. Wow, I'm so good. I got my life all together. When we realize, no, I'm just a work in progress. God is growing me. I'm broken. Um, And as we build that, we can build others as well. Okay. Carolyn says... My foundation is Jesus Christ and look forward to the day we can gather together for church and thankful for the Bible read along family, which gives me a feeling of connection and connecting with God's church today. Um, And again, I don't know where all of you are watching from. I know there's different restrictions all over. We just had new restrictions um, come out again, which is, you know, is probably going to shut down many churches in Alberta, at least for the next three weeks. That's what they say. Um, I don't know how much I believe that because they keep saying two more weeks, three more weeks, and things keep dragging on. So we are in the same boat right now, Carolyn, where things are going to be changing again here. And so we are working through that. And I don't know what you guys are working through. That is why it's important for me and, and you. Let's keep inviting people. Let's keep telling them about it. Let's keep connecting. And maybe they don't connect with Bible Read Along, but maybe you know someone that would like to connect with Celebrate Recovery. Maybe they don't connect with Celebrate Recovery, but you can connect with them personally and start going, you know what? There's a couple people I need to call maybe once a week and just connect with. Build community. Now more than ever, we need to not only be the church, We need to, and that's really, you know, for many of us, we can't go to church, so we definitely need to be the church right now. And we need both, remember? But let's keep being the church to people. Let's keep loving people, showing them the goodness of God. I think that is it for today from Bible Read Along. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Feel free to share it out. Tell others. Maybe you know someone that would just benefit from this. Maybe someone's doing a Bible study on Corinthians and would like just maybe a different view. Let me know. Let them know. Spread the word. God bless you. And we will be back tomorrow with more Bible read-along. God bless, guys. We'll see you soon.